Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned, and as was highlighted also in a little bit of the children's message today, our focus is on the epistle lesson, which is tied in with the Old Testament reading and the Gospel reading, again, proclaiming that good news, binding up the brokenhearted, opening the eyes of the blind, and doing, again, the things that the gospel does what it, what it accomplishes and what that blessing is for all of us today. Is that the volume going on? As we focus in on the epistle reading today, we again highlight again the, the hymn of the day, that reminder, we're all one in mission. Even though we're all very unique. They're very unique. We, we all have our own trials, our own challenges. We have our own views of different things. Favorite numbers, favorite colors, favorite outfits, favorite vehicles, favorite sports that we enjoy doing or that we enjoy watching, favorite teams that are ours. All that can be so different, right? And, and yet there is something that is so key, so vital, so important for us that we gathered here again today to, to take note of it and to be comforted and encouraged in. What was the last verse of that? Epistle reading verse 27, again, where the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, with all confidence, with all focus, just expresses this straightforward, simple fact. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. When you do this, you have to be careful that he's not blasting out there. It's not a hope. It's not a suggestion. Paul is basically making an important declaration, an important reminder. Folks, we're it. We are the body of Christ. And again, not by anything we have done, not by any choices or decisions we've made, completely, totally, by the grace of God, by the working of the Holy Spirit coming into our hearts. Whether again, through baptism as an infant, young child, a teenager, an adult, an older adult, again, when, that doesn't matter. What, what, what matters is that the Holy Spirit, through the means of grace, the gospel, and word, and sacrament, has come and planted that seed of faith. God did that. God did that for us. And so that's why Paul, with all certainty, can say, you are the body of Christ. Because he's not saying, well, if you've done this, and you've accomplished this task, and you've made this decision, it, it, it's in one aspect, and, and again, in a very good way, a very positive way, it's not up to us. Through God's grace and through his power, we are the body of Christ. We're, we're, we're joined together with Christ, who is our head. He's the head. He, he's the thing that controls it all. Again, you have that little illustration with using the whole body to pick up that book. You know, all the eyes and the hearing, and the instructions and all that works together. But honestly, without the head, without the brain, none of that would matter. I mean, we're given this image. So often... You think about many of the parables that Jesus taught. Right? He used a, a real-life, earthly picture connection that people could relate with to explain the spiritual truth. And in this sense, the, the, the image, the portrayal of the, the body, of how our own physical body works, is, again, how the body of believers is to work together. And the key is, the focus is, that we are all one in mission, one together because of what Christ has done. And it is Christ that unites us together. Again, I, I, I return back to this truth, and I have expressed this already a few times in just my couple of months of being here, a few months of being here. You know, 
And I was going to say other than my wife Stephanie, but even with that, understand, I wouldn't know any of you, and yes, even my wife, if it wasn't for Christ. Because even Steph and I, we, we, we were brought together because we both went to our church prep high school in Watertown, Wisconsin. So, so even Christ had a hand in that. If it hadn't been for Christ in the church, you know, I don't even want to think about that, but we maybe never would have met it. And I wouldn't know any of you wouldn't have this connection, this opportunity to worship with you, to pray with you, to encourage you, to cry with you, to laugh with you, to work together if it wasn't for Christ. And, and, and again, for the most part, that truth can be said of each and every one of us. Behold the incredible power of Christ. Now he brings us together. How can we not and that's really what the Apostle Paul wants us to again remember. And, and so we're talking about building a strong body. Because you can have a body, but if we don't do the right things, we don't recognize what's going on, that body can become weak. It, it, it will not accomplish what it needs to. So again, we're, we're reminded when we want to build a strong body, there are definitely things we have to do. Again, and, and again, the image is there, and it's almost that extreme silliness, but sometimes we need that extreme silliness. You know, to imagine, what would it be like if your hand said to you, you know what, I don't want to be part of the body today. And it'll work, but I'm hungry. And I'm going to be like a pig and put my face down in the plate or a bowl. No, I want my hands to work together to feed, to strengthen this body. It, it has to work together because that's the purpose that God's given for these hands. And yes, friends, I know there are extreme situations, cases, that, that we are reminded where things don't work and people adapt. Step and I first saw our first congregation, and those congregations that we had the chance to serve were out in South Dakota. Isabel and Timberlake, 20 miles apart, West River Country. Small little town of Isabel. 300? The mayor of the metropolis of Isabel, Jack Wright, member of the church, born without the use of his arms, his hands. He made his living income by being a foot painter. He painted portraits with his feet. He ate with his, his you know, feet. And feet. So people overcome. We hear about the different senses when someone's blind, their sense of hearing and smell is so acute. Right, the, you know, the, the other senses pick up when we have a weakness and a failure. But those people struggle, and, and that's Paul's whole purpose, right? When any part of our body isn't working, it's a struggle. It hurts. It's not good. And, and again, that's the image that, that Paul's giving to us, inspired by the Holy Spirit, saying as we come together with not an option, but the reality, you are the body of Christ, and Christ unites us together, that, that we need to recognize that though we're all very different, just as the body has many different parts, they all have a purpose. And they need to work together. Because when they don't, it's hard. When my eyes say I'm tired, I don't want to work. I don't get to see. So Paul is coming to us with these words of encouragement, friends. These words of encouragement that as we continue on in our walk here in this world with fellow Christians and non-Christians alike to be reminded we're a body. We're joined. We're connected together through the incredible power and love of Christ. He joins us together. So let that joining together be which really strengthens us and then that recognition of knowing that though we're varied in many ways, we heard in that universe, varied gifts, varied personalities, when we keep Christ as the head, when we keep the focus 
on that ministry and the cross and what that cross represents and the gospel message that we are saved by God's grace, that salvation is ours through the work of Christ, his incredible redeeming work, and that because of that, you and I are set free. Set free from the, the burden, the burden and guilt of sin. We join together in confessing our sins. And we heard that encouragement. That not only are our sins forgiven because Christ paid for those sins on the cross, that the guilt connected with those sins is also removed. And see, sometimes I think, friends, we forget about that. Because Satan just seems to have a great, enjoyable time burdening us and beating us up with guilt. And, and that struggle that we think sometimes, well, I want God to know how bad I feel about that sin, how, how bad I, I, I feel so bad, so I just got to keep build, beating myself up. I got to just keep on knowing the guilt that I'm just so guilty. Friends, when we get trapped in that, we're forgetting what Jesus expressed on that cross when he said, it is finished. It's done. He paid the price for those sins and the guilt of that sin. And every time we come, we get to lay the guilt of those sins on that cross, and we get to go out of here free. <clears throat> with our eyes open and with that desire to serve and that recognition of how can we help each other, that interdependence, because we are a body of Christ. We are connected, joined together, even though we might not even know some of the folks here today. Christ joins us together. What a blessing. What an incredible blessing is ours. And that we work forward with that joy and that excitement, recognizing the opportunities that our Lord gives to us, recognizing and rejoicing that we're all different. And everyone gets to beat them up. In some ways, I guess that's the pastor's job. He gets to stand up here and talk and talk and talk and talk. And you all get to be the ears, right? But we also need the hands and the feet. And we need all sorts of different positions and, 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 and titles and body. And it's this idea of working together. But what makes that work isn't a faithful pastor, though that's important. Isn't a committed leadership team, though that's important. Isn't active members. What, what really makes this come together and work is Christ. Christ's love. Christ's power. Christ's truth. It is Christ that joins us together. It is Christ that makes up this body. And we need to always stay focused on and, and recognize and rejoice in our differences. And not let Satan use those to tear us apart. But to come together and to be blessed. And to recognize that by his power and his wisdom, he doesn't give us a choice. He doesn't say, hey, today be part of the body, tomorrow do whatever you want. No, we are the body of Christ. And we keep that body strong by staying focused on Christ, his truth, his love, and his power. And yes, it does matter. It's just as when I stub my toe, my whole body hurts. Or, as many of you know, because I know we've had that rash of the different knee surgeries, right? When, when one part, when my knee isn't working, it affects the whole body, right? Because then I favor that one, and then I start walking different. Next thing I know, I'm out of line, and my back's hurting, and everything is in pain, and I don't sleep good, and my whole body's affected. No surprise, God knows what he's talking about. He knows our bodies, and he knows us. And he knows how Satan wants to play these tricks and try to disrupt us. But by God's grace and God being in control, we know we're bigger and better than that. Because we are bigger and better than Satan. Because we have Christ on our side. He is our head. We are the body. So we build that strong body by relying on Christ. Recognizing our very gifts, our varied individualities and working together to the glory of God. That always be our focus every day. His. Amen.